What up, watch peeps? I got one of the most unique pieces I've reviewed yet to look at today, the Biotech Leviathan. My first impression when I opened the box was, I don't like it. But that's a snap judgment, and for review, I really should articulate what I don't like about it and what I do like about it. This is a professional show, after all. <laughs> anyway, I will try to break those things down for you guys. So this brand is based out of Slovakia, and this is the first time I've ever handled one of their watches. Um, it's a new brand, as far as I can tell. I don't know exactly when they got started. I couldn't find that information on their website, but they do have a total of four different models available. This special edition is probably my favorite of the bunch. It's very cool, but that price point, I really don't like to say what a watch should cost. It costs what it costs, but I am comfortable in saying whether or not I'm willing to pay it. So this watch actually was lent into the channel. It's a part of a tour. A few other reviewers are going to get it, so I got to send it along. Before we get started, if you enjoy the channel, subscribing is a huge help. Always much appreciated. All right, let's get to it. I'm Pete, and we are Chilling with Watches. All right, first things first, wrist check. I am wearing a Vostok Amphibia today. Go figure. This is the special edition sandwich dial. I recased it into the uh, 120 Crown Guards case. I think it looks pretty cool. All right, the Biotech Leviathan. First off, this box. I mean, wow, look at this. This is not a small package, right? Um, you open it, and this they give you the full luxury box treatment. You get this kind of enameled wooden box. A card thanking you for your purchase. I'm sure this information would all be filled out. And on the back side, user manual. So this box actually has a release to even open the lid. And inside you are greeted by a fancy quote, inspired by the past, driven by the future, and the view of your new watch. So yeah, that's the first look I got it as well. It is definitely different, definitely unique. So the box has comes out. I don't know what would be under here. Maybe if you ordered additional straps and such, but really nice box. I'm not a box guy. I, I, I my favorite is when they give you a small cardboard box with a maybe a watch roll or a one watch carrier in it. But the presentation is nice. I can't knock them for that. All right. So these uh, they do look like they're available on their website. And the price is 1,075 euros, or about $1,274 US. Pretty steep. Um, which brings me to the first thing I don't like. I don't want to say it's not worth that. It's definitely a solid feeling, well put together watch. But when I buy a micro brand, me personally, it's usually for one of two reasons. The designs are awesome, or it's a, represents a great value. There are micro brands out there that are successful that don't really go for either of those things. Manta, not saying it's not quality. Their designs don't speak to me, but maybe they speak to you. And they don't represent a great value. Their quality is through the roof, but it's not at a value. You pay for it. But this watch doesn't really bring either of those things to the table for me. Uh, when you hit this price point, you're competing with solid releases from heritage brands. And I, I just think that's a difficult proposition for a unheard of micro brand. So let's cover the things I don't like first, and then we'll, we'll get to the more cheery side of the review. The other things I don't like, and, and again, these are mostly just design and style things, which means their personal preference. Um, maybe this watch really speaks to you. It took some deliberation to figure out what exactly it was I didn't like about this watch. And the thing I don't like at least is the lugs. They might be the single deal breaker on this watch for me. They're out of place and they clash with the rest of the design. They don't transition from the case well. It, it, it just looks abrupt. It's not an overly thick case as far as divers go. Um, let's see what we got. 14, 6, or 7 with the domed sapphire. But the slab sides on the 39 millimeter case, that's the case is 39. The um, bezel is, I think, 40. 
you know, 40 at the bezel, 39 case. But 14 and a half millimeters plus, that's a lot on a 39 millimeter case, especially with the case design that has slab sides. It just, it makes it look like a hockey puck. And there's just a tad too much polish on this design for my like. Um, literally, the bracelet reminds me of a tank tread, which is very tool watchy, but then it has all this polish. It's like a chromed out tank. It just doesn't make sense. I, I would love to see if they built this watch with a full a full brush finish, um, really embrace the tool look. Because you have this sand textured dial. Let's see if I can get so where you can see that. Which I'm not a huge fan of. When they first came out, yes, but I think they're a little played out at this point. And that is a little more tool watchy, I guess. That's just another thing that clashes with the polish, all the polish on the finish. They just don't go well together. The dial layout, however, brings us to some of the things I do like. Um, I, I, lo I actually like the brown and gilt combo. I think that looks fantastic. I love the logo. I think it's super cool. Um, simple branding. I like the date window. I think it's well done. It's six o'clock balance. The gold frame is pretty cool. The handset, I don't mind the handset, but someone said they look like tongue depressors and now I can't unsee that. I don't know. I love the second hand though. The second hand is fantastic. The black and white bezel might be a little bit of a mismatch, but I actually rather like it. I think it's pretty cool. Um, the red at the pip going with the red text here. I definitely think that's cool. And if you get rid of the rest of it, that's a pretty cool looking watch, right? I, I wish with the Swiss movement, they could have gone thinner with this. So let's take a look. Let's unscrew the crown. If you want to see the grip, it's not really coin edge or knurl. That's I don't know what you call it, a coarse coin edge. So there's you can there's a pop you can feel when you get it unscrewed. Wine's pretty smooth. Time setting position, no problem. Date flips very nicely. And best I could tell that is a color match date wheel. Other another nice touch, another thing I really like. So let's get that screwed back down. Oh my god, with the catch or not. It's hard to grip this crown. I'm having a hard time getting it to catch. There we go. Yeah, where the position of it, again, these ginormous lugs, they're in the way of you being able to get a hold of it down here at four o'clock. So the movement is a Salita SW200, which is a, an ETA2824 clone. It's a Swiss movement. So that's a good choice. I'm fine with that. Um, I definitely think it would allow them to make a thinner watch. I don't know if the thickness has anything to do with the water resistance, which is 300 meters. Uh, what is the crown size on here, since that's something we do? 6.7. So the crown, the size of the crown is fine. It's just hard to... It's hard to reach because of the lugs. I believe it is a signed crown, again, with that pretty cool logo of theirs. Uh, we did the case size, the lug to lug. Actually, I have not measured this yet. 50.2 on the lug to lug. And the thickness we've talked about. The lug width, what is the actual width of the strap at the base? 20 millimeter lugs. But the outside of the lugs is 27. So you have this drop from 27.3 to 20. It's just a little drastic for me. The bezel, I believe this is a sapphire bezel. And the action is fine. It's a little loose. There's play in it. Um, but it seems precise enough. Lines up and the clicks get you where you need to be so the white portion of the bezel is actually loomed that's a pretty cool touch it's very faint though it does not stand out much at all compared to the loom on the dial and the hands so the case profile we looked at that it has these i don't know what you call this kind of lugs. it's almost like a scrolled lugs they are screwed in the bracelet that is and Polished sides, 
I think the case itself is mostly polished. The only brushing being on the bracelet links. Case back, if we can get a look at that. Has their logo done in a more artistic fashion. Again, it's a very cool engraved case back with the, what is that, a dragon? And around the outside, you have the normal spec sheet. And I think if you can see the script right there, that is that same quote we saw inside the box. The bracelet has uh, no taper to it. It is 20 the whole way with a um, butterfly clasp, which I'm also not a great fan of. Just no micro adjust. And these are long links. So, I mean, this... This is as coarse as your micro adjust is going to get. 12 or so, 11 or 12 millimeters. That doesn't give you a lot of refinement to get a good fit. So uh, speaking of which, let's take a look on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. I actually got a decent fit, a little loose, but that, that's, you're going to have that. So obviously, you know, 40 millimeter bezel, that's going to wear just fine on a seven and a quarter inch wrist. That way, this is going to fit almost anybody. Um, it's got a long lug to lug. That's not going to work for everybody, but 50, you know, that, that will suit a wide range of wrists. It does sit a little on top of the wrist. So if you want to see it side by side, this is like a 41 millimeter diver that I was wearing. Smaller dial makes this look smaller, but I mean, they're almost identically sized. Here it is side by side with an SKX case. This is the Crystal Times No Crown Guards, but the dimensions are the same. Doesn't look noticeably smaller than that. But it does look slightly thicker. Here it is. This is a aftermarket mod case, but this basically is like a six digit sub case 40 millimeter minus the crown guards so similarly sized cases that will wear quite differently based on the different dial sizes and this is an invicta pro diver which is more like a five digit sub and that looks like it wears much smaller than this even though these are both 40 millimeter watches All right. Keep the loom. Now my camera is picking that up really nicely. Um, I guess the whole bezel is loomed. I thought it was just that white portion, but the whole bezel is loomed. It's really faint in person. You can barely see the numbers and the white first 20 minutes is just glowing slightly blue. The rest of it is glowing just fine. And it is using... Um, Old Radium Swiss Super Luminova. All right, that's it. Let's flip the camera back around and wrap this thing up. So that's it, guys. The Biotech Leviathan. Now, I'm all for out there funky designs, but when you get into those kind of designs, they're not going to be for everybody. Either it's going to speak to you or it's not. And this particular design doesn't happen to speak to me, but that's okay. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that are going to love it. So let me know what you guys think. Share your thoughts in the comments. Before I let you go, sneaker check. Sorry, I'm just wearing the 350s again, man. It's getting boring. I'll try and wear something different next week. All right, I'm out. If it's not too much trouble, like, subscribe, and come back next time. Peace.